So dudes, Ram is one of the most dynamic characters in Siege history. With the ability to get a ton of vertical map control more quickly and efficiently. Okay. What the? Have HP. Dead. They know I'm coming. Behind me. Uh, doorway to A site. One drop down stairs. Stairs, 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 stairs. Dead. Stairs. The new operator has an R4C and you can put a two time scope on it. I'll get you to a point where you'll know exactly how, when, and where to get the most out of Ram's gadget, the boogie car. A bulletproof tank that eviscerates any kind of destructible surface and gadgets in its path, giving you a ton of flexibility in your sight takes. This video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. If you want to support small businesses, Bespoke Post is a great way for you to do so. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome, top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Ranging from products like this waterproof speaker to high quality utility knives. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. But you can also get stuff for your kitchen, clothes, even exotic foods like oysters. Bespoke Post lets you fill out a quiz on their website that will give you preferential treatment in terms of the stuff that you get. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. You'll get to preview the box before it even shows up to make sure it's something that you actually want. And you can skip entire months if you're not interested. Bespoke Post was nice enough to send me a couple boxes themselves, including the flip box, which includes this Damascus knife I already showed you, plus a honing rod to take care of it with. I'll have some delicious fresh cold brew coffee in this cold brew carafe in the concentrate box. This is a Primula cold brew maker. You can kind of see through the fog, there's a little shell in the center. That's where the coffee grounds go. And you leave this for 24 hours and then you have some delicious cold brew coffee. And it comes with a little flavor stirrer as well. Here I will demonstrate the knife found in the flip box. Unboxing time. Man, we just took out the recycling too. I, I mean, wow, look at that. I love the smell of new electronics. When this is done charging, I will have a speaker for my beach trip. So if all that sounds good to you, to get 20% off of your first box of awesome, go to the link in the description and at checkout, use the code GREGOR20, that's GREGOR20, or go to bespokepost.com slash GREGOR20. Get some cool stuff, opt out of the stuff you don't want, support small businesses, everybody is a happy camper. Thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. The most important part of Ram's design is their ability to work vert. So I'll talk about the gadget specifically, but also how to use the gadget in a smart and safe way, just like any other vertical operator. So I'm gonna talk about how to do an effective vertical clear as well. Try not to skip around to your favorite parts. I promise if you watch the video from start to finish, you'll pick up a ton of useful info. So Ram is a three armored attacker. She's a support character. And as an attacker, that three armor rating gives her a lot of noise output, which some may see as a big downside. Personally, I don't see her bulk as a downside. In fact, in a lot of ways, I think it's really cool. And playing Siege every day has removed shame from my subconscious. Ow. If Carlac from Baldur's Gate 3 has taught me anything, I will do anything for my battle axe wielding queen. If Ram gives me a direct order to set up flank wash cams for the vertical attack setup, then damn it, I will. And you should too, because if you don't, her gas powered death Roombas will make so much noise that you won't hear anybody sneaking up on you. Her loudness notwithstanding, she gets the infamous R4C with the ability to mount anything up to the two times scope. And if nothing else, is certainly a potent gunfighter just because of that. In addition to that powerful primary weapon, she has the option of running a secondary shotgun, as well as either smokes or flashbangs, which rounds out a pretty flexible kit. So grenades of your choice, a great gun, and one of the best verticality gadgets in the game. But the gadget requires a lot of things to be done correctly, and you also need good map terrain. The boogie can be used as a makeshift utility destructor, but there are more efficient alternatives like Zofnades and the GON-6. The boogie car is a remote activated autonomous tank that's designed to destroy anything that gets in its way, aside from reinforced or hard map terrain. Ram can huck the car out in front of her, not a super far distance, but you get the hang of that distance after a while. When the car is ready to go, it will indicate its path with three directions you can select. Jutting out from the front will be a light that indicates the direction it's going. You can see it and your enemies can see it too. By default on mouse and keyboard, you can swap the directions with the B key, kind of like Habana's X Kairos. Much like in real life, you can go to the left, 
to the right or straight down the middle, but there may be some circumstances where the right and left make sense, like in a mixed economy. The internal logic of the car is that it's gas operated with a wireless ignition switch activated by a detonator on Ram's person. So when the car is moving, it can't be jammed by mute jammers. If the car is initially deployed in the radius of a mute jammer, it won't start. The boogie doesn't have any particular counters aside from explosives or shooting the red gas tank on its back. It will drive right through a Rooney Gates, eating a charge and forcing it to cool down. It will go right through barbed wire, deployable shields, and a zombie barricades. The only thing that will stop it is blowing it up or shooting the gas tank, or running up its timer. However, even C4 might have a hard time destroying it because there's a brief period where the charge will light on a surface before you hit the detonator. So if the boogie is close enough to it, it will chew it up into a million pieces before you have a chance to blow it. I think in terms of the way the boogie is coded, it kind of has this destructive force field around it. Anything that encroaches on this sphere of destruction around the car will be dealt damage. So, in a roundabout way, Ram's vertical game is a bit more resilient than her peers when it comes to getting countered by C4. And it gives you some fun reactive plays. You can use the boogie to disrupt foothold setups. You can make rotations and destroy the floor at the same time. Another neat interaction, Ram can deadlift your mom, giving her the ability to chuck this thing straight through default barricades in one toss. It'll go right through, and you can pick the car back up again and pocket it like any conventional drone. Ram gets three boogie cars. Ram can cover a large amount of vertical control more quickly and efficiently than her peers. But the thing is, she's really good at this and not so good at quick, precise verticality. It takes time for the cars to work. Buck, for instance, is a much better gunfighter because he can shotgun and then switch to his main gun and fire a lot more quickly. Ram can be heard from a million miles away. What you need is a solid plan and a good idea before you get into the building of what you are trying to do. Now, this applies to other verticality operators, yes, of course. But for Ram, lack of planning hits her quite heavily. Ram can work a lot of ground very quickly, but working one specific angle is slow, cumbersome, and loud. The loudness can certainly work if you want to use the car as a distraction to go somewhere else and make a play by masking your noise output. However, when it comes to working vertical, sound cues are often needed so you don't get snuck up on and flanked. Defenders can move towards you and you won't have any indication of it without a drone. So therein is the advantage of the car working remotely. Without your undivided attention, Ram can do two things at once. She can work vertical and keep her gun up to watch flank. That is a useful bit of self-sufficiency that Buck and Sledge do not have. And the R4C is gunfight freeload. All right, so we've talked about what Ram can do and what she can't do. Now let's get you in a position where you can actually use the gadget. Let's talk about how to do a vertical sight take. Ram is great for the easiest and most typical form of a vertical hit. A second floor roam clear, followed by working vertical for a bomb site on the first floor directly below. Bank is an example of where this is commonly done to hit the open area and archives bomb sites. This is the easiest form of vertical to work because you only have to establish and maintain control of one floor of the building, letting you allocate all five players to the second floor to eventually work their way down. It effectively makes a single man roam up top useless because even if they're an exceptionally skilled gunfighter, they'll probably get traded out by sheer man count disadvantage, forcing the defense to have to allocate more players away from the first floor to stop you. Unless the defenders make a hell of a read, they're not going to put five people on top of the building because they'll leave the bomb site exposed. Since we know the defenders have to play this gambit, we can always overwhelm them with sheer man count on the second floor in a five versus four or a five versus three. With good droning and positioning, this strat is always a safe and efficient play. At the start of the round, try to get a drone on top square. We'll call this drone one. One of my favorite pre-placed spots is on this bush. Use that first drone you put at top square as an active drone for your team. Check janitor, office, couches, and trump. Ask a teammate to drone out stock. Let's assume that your team won their gunfights or the roamers ran away. Now we've established second floor control. So we have to maintain second floor control. Second floor control is maintained by a flank drone cutting off bottom square, a drone watching main lobby for the spiral staircase, and maybe an air jab or a teammate just aiming their gun at the top of marble. Okay, so we have top floor control. Now what do we do? 
Well, we have to think about the common high traffic points for the defense. So to cut off archives from tellers, you throw a boogie car here in CO, hold this, and the defense has nowhere else to stop the diffuser and archives. Does your team want to hit open area instead? Throw a boogie car into stock right here, and you can clear cover from all of these desks. This car and janitor cuts off a common rotate in between small office and archives. Get the bomb down and hold from up top. Now you know how to do a basic second floor vertical hit on bank. You can do this on any map. A more complex iteration of this formula is done for a first floor vertical hit where the site is in the basement. But as you can see, we have to be mindful of rotations from the second and the basement floor. See how that's more difficult? To avoid this problem, coordinated teams will do what we just talked about in a much quicker and consolidated way in the form of a top-down clear, clearing the second floor of roamers entirely before they get on the first floor and start working that vertical. That's a bit more difficult to do, and it's why basement sites are so powerful in this game. If you'd like to learn some basic verticality spots to incorporate into your gameplay, I've left some resources for you in my Discord. Just check out the link in the description and scroll to the how to play R6S section when you finish the onboarding. All right, we spent a lot of time talking about vert, and that's certainly a powerful aspect of Ram's design but she's also useful in a pinch if you need a tight corridor dealt with. The problem has more to do with deploying the boogie car safely. A good example of this is for an Oregon bunker hit. If you throw the boogie at the elbow spot, yeah, it'll pressure the opponent off, but you can still get shot from box or Shiko. So you gotta keep angles in mind and remember that this is an FPS game. Still, that forced pressure is nice to have. Considering if the enemy doesn't have impact, they're kind of screwed facing the boogie car head on. Another advantage to the boogie is that you can work vertical on usually dangerous positions from a distance without having to worry about C4. For instance, for a clubhouse kitchen hit, you can throw the cars from outside the building completely. When placing the boogies, please keep this rule in mind in the back of your head. Don't create angles that you don't want to hold with your gun. If I throw a boogie car here at the entrance into kitchen from freezer, that's great, except for the part where somebody can look up and shoot me as I run in through the door. Crappy vertical is not better than no vertical. No vertical is better than crappy vert. I am sorry, Union. I promise I will stop doing this. Ram's an interesting take on the verticality game of Rainbow Six with a multi-purpose gadget, fantastic weapons, and nades of your choice. She's a solid A-tier character in my opinion, even if she does require a little bit of planning to get the most out of. But if you come up with a plan and have a buddy to help you watch flank, you can get a lot done with Siege's new ceiling destroyer, Ram. Subscribe for more videos like this one, and thanks for watching. Deuces. My oh, go? Nice